Today we're going to talk about how to install a hot end with an automatic cooling fan on the Big Tree Tech Octopus Max EZ version 1.0. So in order to do this, obviously we need a hot end. We also need the thermistor in the hot end and of course a fan. In this case I'm using a 24 volt fan, but you can use all the way down to a 5 volt fan or a 12 volt fan. But in this case, I'll just show you how to do 12, or excuse me, 24 volts. So let's go over to the desktop for a moment. I'm on the website for Big Tree Tech, and we need to find the information about our board. So we're going to click on repositories, then we're going to click or type, excuse me, octopus, and this will bring us to our board. So as you can see right here, we have a couple of things that we could go through, like the manual. But I'm going to show you a quicker route. We're going to go to the actual, pardon me for a second, to the hardware, then the pinout diagram. This one's really good in that it shows you everything about the board, including the actual pin numbers. This is going to be a value. But as you can see, the hot ends are listed down here. So we have hot end 0 hot end 1, hot end 2, and a hot end 3. So there's four hot ends and of course a pin for that. We also have to find the actual thermistors. So they're located over here. So you can see them right here, but they're also located for the pins right here. So we have THB, which is thermal, hot, or heat bed, excuse me. Then we have hot end for the thermal hot end, 0 thermal hot end 1, thermal hot end 2, and thermal hot end 3. Now this will become important when we go over to the Marlin firmware, which I've already downloaded, which is located right here. So let's go back over to the board and actually make some connections. So on the board, what we have right here are our hot ends. So we have to find hot end 0 which is going to be for the hot end. And to connect it, we have to put, or I recommend you put, actual ferrule connectors on your connections. So the process is quite simple. You just take one of these, you slide it over here, you push it down as far as it can go, you then take a crimp for ferrules, slide it in about that far, push with a little bit of pressure on the back wire and then crimp. That'll give you a nice tight connection. So let's do this over here. I'm just going to loosen these bolts here so we can slide them in. And this is just for the actual heating element. Next we'll have to do the thermistor. So we'll take this part right here and we're going to slide one in here and the other one in here. Now there's actually no polarity that you have to worry about, so you can do it either way. And then we'll tighten it down like so. This just gives you a safe and good connection. So those are nice and taut in here. Let's tighten that a little bit more. There we go. Next we have to connect the actual thermistor. This tells temperature with a glass bead. So we know it's the second one right here, and that'll take care of that connection. Next, we have to do the fan, and the fan in this case requires jumpers. So if you look over here, there's three sets of pins for the first fan, being fan zero. So that means that we have to set a jumper for 24 volts in order to use this. So let me just weigh this down a little over here. And let's get a jumper on that. So let's put the jumper right here. This is for the actual power that we're using in this case. And then we're going to take the actual connection and connect it like so. So there you go. Next, we're going to have to actually pull the drive right here, and we're going to place this in our card reader and into our computer. So you might hear a beep right about now. Now we'll go back over to the desktop. 
I'll bring up the actual environment we're in and I'm going to go to the Explorer, open folder. I'm going to go to my downloads folder where I've already extracted the Marlin folder. Click once, then go to the next Marlin folder, then select folder. Now this will take a moment to actually load and it will not be set to the default that we're working with being the default ends which is default environment. So we have to change this because this is for ramps. So in order to do that, what we're going to have to do is go over to configuration.h and we're going to have to change first the board type that we're working with for the motherboard. So we'll go to, let's see, source core boards.h. Inside boards.h, we'll do a control F and we'll search on Octopus. And as you can see, we've got three of them here. And those are not the boards that we're currently working with. So we have to find the EZ, which is down here. So we're going to copy this. Then we're going to note the actual processor that we're using for our MCU. In this case, we either have STM32H723VE or STM32H723ZE. In this case, I believe I'm working with the ZE version of this because I've looked at this before. So let me show you what I'm talking about after I post or paste this right here. Let me just first set the serial port to negative one for our board to connect via USB. So let's go back over the board for a second. And what I'm making reference to is actually right here. This says STM32723 and then it says ZET6, I believe. I might be misreading that, but you can read it for yourself when you do it on your board. So let's go back over to the desktop of the computer. We have to set up the thermal settings. So I'm going to search on thermal settings. And once we get here, what you'll see is a bunch of different configurations for your thermistor. In this case, we're going to use number eight for us in this particular instance. It may vary for you. You'll have to consult your documentation. Now note there are several different settings down here for different types of thermistors that you can use. Like for this, you have the PT100 and the PT1000, which we're currently not using, but at least you know where these are actually found. So we're going to go here for temp sensor zero, which is our first thermistor, and we're going to backspace, and then we're going to say eight. That sets it for us. Now there's a bunch of other settings down here for different settings that you may come across. And then there's uh, thermal runaway settings down here, which I advise you strongly not to change. So the thermal runaway is probably a little bit further down, but uh, let's see what we've got here. Sorry, this has changed a little bit. Here are the thermal runaway protections. This will help you prevent a fire on your printer if something goes wrong. Because if your thermistor is not connected, it will turn off your printer heating automatically. So I'll show you why that's important in a second. This prevents any kind of damage to you or the environment around you per the firmware configuration. So let's go back and first find some stuff about the fan that we have to hook up because we already hooked it up, as you can see, back over here to this connection right here. And we know the pin is PA6, so we have to set that in the actual firmware. So we have to go to the advanced configuration and we have to search on, let's see, cooling, fans and this brings us to our first automatic fan so to set this 
we have to know what the pinout was, which we just saw over here being PA6. But to confirm it, what we can do is we can go over to, let's see, source pins, then find our board, which hopefully is in one of these folders. So it's not in that one. Let's look through here. It's not there. So let's minimize those and see if it's over in here someplace. So I'm not finding it right away. So we're going to use a little trick that I like to use. And that is we're going to go to coreboards.h and we're going to look for STM32H7. So we'll minimize this, go to pins, find STM32H7, which is right here. And you can see the board pinouts for the board. So what we need to do is find the actual fans in here. So I'm going to do a control F and then I'm going to type fan. And that'll bring us down to here for fan zero, which does say PA6. So I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to go back over to the advanced configuration. So I'll have to minimize this for a second. Find configuration advanced. And for the negative one, I'm going to paste our pin so it knows where to communicate. Now down here, there is an actual uh, auto fan that will turn on when it reaches 50 degrees Celsius. Because ambient temperature in the current place that I'm in is about 27 degrees Celsius, I'm going to change this to about 35 degrees Celsius because I don't want to make it too warm. Also, I'm going to show you that you can modify the fan speed right here by saying 200. So it'll only go to 200 instead of 255 being the full sp fan speed. Now, there's another setting in here for, um, let's see if we got it here. Actually, they changed it, so I'm not going to talk about that. But we'll, I'll show you another way to turn off the fan in a moment. But there used to be something here that would turn off the fan um, when you reach a certain temperature. So in this case, it's doing chamber temperature and then cooler fan temperature. So I'm going to avoid that for now. But at least you'll see it power up when it reaches this temperature and the fan will go on. So it might be almost instantaneously. So let's minimize this for a second and set up the actual I and I. So we're gonna have to find our board again, which is down here for the chipset. And we're gonna search on Octopus again. And as you can see, it's brought us to here and our chipsets that it talks about. So it's one of these two chipsets that says VET, I believe ours is Z. So it's gonna be this one right here per the examination of our board. So we're gonna highlight this, copy it. Then we're going to minimize our INI. We're gonna go and find platformio.ini, highlight the Mega 2560 and paste it right here. So to actually set up the build, we're gonna hit the checkbox right here. So the build is now started. What it's first gonna do is download whatever is required for the actual build based on the INI file that we're working with up here. So this will go out and grab all the things that are necessary. So this might take a few seconds to actually do, but once this is complete, the compiling or building of our actual firmware will start to occur. So as you can see, it's moving kind of slow. I don't know if it's my connection today or if the file is rather large, but as soon as this completes, what we'll see is the building right here. So let's give this a second. And then while this is occurring, what we'll see is if you see yellow during the build, that means that it's a warning. If you see red in the build for text, that means that there's an actual um, error during the build. 
So right about now we're going to start to see that and hopefully it'll kick off pretty good but obviously the build is happening slower than it normally does. So it might be that they changed the build environment for Marlin but we're not seeing the whole entire process at the moment. Hopefully it'll be good but we'll know in a second. But what we can do is we can watch it in the .pio folder. So currently it looks like nothing is building, but it does say building over here. So this folder would begin to populate if something is occurring. So there may be an issue that's occurring, but let's see what we've got here. So let's click over here. It says that it's doing the task of building. Then it says resolving dependencies for this actual build. So it may take a little bit longer than normal. I'm going to click cancel and then I'm going to click the build button again to see if it speeds it up. Apparently that's not speeding it up. So let's uh, give this a bit of time. I'll pause the video for a second and then we'll see what happens in a few minutes. Okay, the moment I click pause, it started to actually build. So. As you can see right here, it's building and it's starting to populate inside of here for our actual build. We may see some yellow in a second, which will be a warning, but we're actually seeing red. So let's see what's going on here. So it says right here, sanity check, you cannot use E0 for your fan pin. So apparently there is a safety precaution that we have to actually deal with. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to the desk for a second. I'm going to actually disconnect this here and I'm going to pull the actual jumper and move it one over to here. So it's the second fan port. So once that jumper is on, we'll put it over on the second one and then we'll have to adjust it in the firmware. So let's go back over to the firmware. We're going to have to go to the advanced configuration, but we're going to have to find our pins real quick. So we'll go to source, pins. We'll scroll down to where it's located in here. Click on this and we'll connect to the next one being PA5. So we'll copy that. We'll then go to the advanced and we'll change this to PA5 instead. Now let's try building again to see if the issue goes away. This may be a reserve fan pin and that's why we may be seeing that error. But it's a good thing that we actually saw the error because this will allow you to actually know how to adjust to that issue. So now it's starting to build again. It looks like if we scroll up here, let me just minimize these things so you can see what's occurring. It's building here, the yellow is a warning. And then what we're seeing in here is the folder populating with our build. The ELF means we're about to get our binary. So we're gonna right click on this and we're gonna say reveal in file explorer. So it brought it up here we're going to drop it on this drive where you see firmware.cur. So we're going to right click and we're going to send it to the actual D drive. So now you can see there's two files. If this successfully loads, it'll rename to this and the date and time that we built it will show up here. So let's give this a try by going over to the actual desktop. So I'm going to pop this out. I'm going to connect the actual drive right here to load the firmware and we're going to have to power this so I'm going to have to actually plug these in. So it's a good thing to check what you have so you have power and then you have motor power. Currently we're not using the actual motor power but I'm going to connect it anyways because I have two of these. So in order to do this you can see that it's negative positive. So negative is ground positive is voltage. So we're going to slide this in and we're going to tighten this down. Then we'll do the same over here.
and then we'll do the same over here. So we'll double check negative positive. So negative and then positive. Now the other place you can check this is obviously the pinout diagram. So let's close this and verify the colors. So currently we have negative here, positive here for this. We have positive here, negative here. So we're good over here. So let's give this some power. So I'm gonna to have to plug it in. So I'll take the cord from the power supply and energize the system. Now keep in mind, you don't wanna to touch the board when it's now powered. I'm actually going to connect a USB in a just a moment so we can communicate with the board. So I'm going to slide this over here and connect. You may hear a beep. And then we're gonna go back over to the computer for a second. So on the desktop, I have Pronerface open. Now, normally you won't use this, but it's very good as a tool to actually troubleshoot your configuration. So let me see if I can bring it up so you can see both. There we go. So right here, it says that the COM port is one, which is not correct, and that the speed is a quarter million bits per second. So we need to check that real quick. So I'm gonna go over to the desktop. I'm going to type device manager. I'm going to open it. I'll bring it over so you can see it. And then I'll go to the COM ports and expand it. And you can see it's COM port 23. So I'll close this. I'll see if it's in the drop down, which it's not. So in this case, I'm going to have to modify this to 23. Then I'll click connect. And now it says the printer is now online. So let's see if we can actually test out the fan. Now the fan is what you want to pay attention to for the actual power and over here you can see that there's actual temperature being read. It's very tiny but you can see over here that for our thermistor it says 9 degrees Celsius. That may or may not be correct. We can see if we can see it with actual debugging communications. So we'll just turn it on here and we do see something occurring so it does say that it's actually colder than 27 degrees celsius which is a little concerning but not too much so i'm going to change this temperature for the hot end in here to 40 degrees celsius because we set it to about 35 and then we'll set it and see if it works so let's click on that and see what happens so we hear the actual um, power supply heating up or making more noise because it's drawing power. And we're watching the temperature. It's moving up very slowly. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on it. And the fan just went on. So we know that's working quite well. We also have our hot end, which is hard to see right now, right here. Let me move these out of the way. And so this is actually somewhat warm now. I don't suggest touching it, but you can see the fan is working. So let's turn it off and see what happens. So I'm going to actually say this is off. We'll let this cool down. When it gets to about 35 degrees Celsius, what will occur is the fan should go off. So it's probably going to take a little bit longer than the actual time of this video to do, but it will eventually turn off when it reaches 35 degrees Celsius. So at this moment, at least I'll take a moment to thank my patrons and people on PayPal, and I will list you in the end credits of the video. And please remember to like, and subscribe the video so that I can bring more videos that are useful to you in the future. So everyone take care, be safe, and I'll talk to you later.